The skies are finally clearing up after a light rain fell most of the afternoon. The weather's approaching 49 degrees, so we've got a brisk West Virginia evening ahead of us. Wrap up tight and settle in, folks. This is 104.3 WBCK, the Basswood Sound. I'm your host, Carrie Hammond. Coming up after a short break, mental health expert Dr. Wick will discuss the recent opioid epidemic that's been affecting... Time to kill before the funeral. Might as well spend it here. This place was always one for decisions. Somewhere for things to fall apart. I came up here every chance I could. One of the all-time great views. Really makes a small town look big. I'm not sure Nick would even want me at his funeral. Given how I left things. I remember spending entire summers on the banks fishing with Nick. My hometown. It felt more imposing in my nightmares. Strange to think of Basswood without its mine. I used to love looking at Basswood from up here. It helped give me perspective. Until that day. Why can't the real world be as clear and peaceful as my own mind? Even if it does mean nothing stays hidden in here. Not even me. I, uh, I've been meaning to ask you something. Don't freak out. Would you be my little girl's godfather? I, I wouldn't trust anyone else with this. And yet I stopped taking his calls. He even called once the day before he died. I'll never know what he wanted to talk to me about. This is Anna. She works freelance. Uh, does a lot of the human interest pieces. What can I say? I'm interested in humans and their pieces. What do you like to write? I gotta run to a review with Walt. You two feel free to chit chat. And Sam, be nice. I had never met someone so interested in others, even in me. The story is important. You know I think that. It's just. People around here have short tempers and long memories. Be careful. Sam! Are you even listening to me? I heard you, Anna. But no, I wasn't listening.
Come on, Anna, look at this. <laughs> what is it? Someone skinny dipping? Anna, you really need to see this. I can't even see. Something's blocking it. Sam, what are you doing? I'm trying to be romantic. What? Wait. Please don't tell me you're proposing. I'm down on one knee, a ring. What else would I be doing? You look like I just ran over your grandma. Okay, the silence is really starting to scare me now. Anna, please say something. Sam, put that away. Come on. I don't want a ring. I don't need a ring. You should know that. We've discussed it before. We weren't happy. She was the one brave enough to face that. Lost in my head again. How much time did I miss? I missed the funeral. Maybe it's for the best. On the bright side, Nick's not alive for me to let him down again. There seems to be something here. Lovers scarring a tree to write down their initials. Always seems twisted to me. I get the feeling it still sees some use, given how bad the coverage is up here. Sorry, Walter, but I don't think I'll stick around. Given up already? Just a quick, depressing jaunt down memory lane and then you're gone? I know you think that the only thing waiting for you down there is hurt. Lots of hurt. And you might be right. But it's been two years. It's time to face the world. Time to adult. The good news, though, at least you don't have to do it alone. Lost the signal. Some things never change. Yuli, you actually came. It's been a while. You've gotten taller. 
Can we talk? We're talking right now. It's cold. So... You left. Joan, that's not fair. You left. Look, Joan, I messed up. You said you wouldn't leave. You said... You said... I don't remember exactly, but you pinky swore. I didn't mean to lie. I just screwed up. After Anna broke up with me, I'm... I'm sorry. I wish words meant anything. I wish this didn't make it harder for you to trust me now. You could have at least called something, especially after, you know, after my dad. I don't know what to say to that. You're right. I wasn't in a state where I could reach out to anyone. I'm still not. If Nick hadn't died, I never would have come back. Thanks for being honest. <laughs> You're always at least honest. Listen, I, uh... I wanted to talk to you about what happened to Dad. It doesn't make sense. He wouldn't have just crashed. He drove like a grandma, you know that. It's wrong. I don't buy it. I'm just in town for the funeral, Joan. I'm not a PI or a cop. You're the closest thing I can talk to. Will you just look into it, Muley? Please? She wants her father's death to mean something. But where does that lead? What if it leads to the truth? That could change everything. An hour ago, you wanted to run away. Now you want to start another investigation? A few questions won't hurt anyone. Just tonight. To reassure her. And myself. This is a wake. If you poke around, people may end up poking back. Okay, whatever you do, at least leave the kid out of it. It would be cruel to lead her on. Friends don't lie to each other. Even if it means disappointing her again? It's your call. Okay. I'll see what I can see and all that. Gumshoe it up. You will? You make some good points. It doesn't fit. I hate when things don't fit. Yeah, me too. I might just be, I don't know, crazy or something, but... You want to know for sure. I get it. Thanks, Muley. I, um, I should go in before my mom misses me. <laughs> you better get in there, too. Can't hide in your car all night. Who says I'm hiding out here? I do. See you inside. Talk to Walter. I'll have to sooner or later. Some of the police force stopped by, which means most of the police force stopped by. Yes, the cat food is under the sink. Yes, yes it is, mother. Trust me. Oh, Samuel is here. 
I'll call you back. Samuel Higgs, as I live and breathe, has it really been over two years? Regardless, I'm so glad you finally made it. It's good to see you. What kept you? A trip down memory lane. I missed the funeral, but I made it to Nick's wake. You have to bring it in for a hug. It's a basswood back in town requirement. So good to see you, even if I wish the circumstances were different. In times like these, we need the comforting touch of others. At least I do. Also, have you spoken to Anna lately? No, why? Um, no reason. If you get the chance, we should catch up. We should really catch up. I'll see you inside. I haven't read an issue of this paper since I left. I wonder how they've been doing without me. Must have been a hard issue to write. Here we go. Mr. Samuel Higgs, big shot investigative reporter. Didn't think you'd ever be back in here. I'd gladly slash your tires. But that mean you couldn't leave town. And you are leaving town right after this, right? Because if you aren't, well, Nick's memory only goes so far. That's what I thought. Come on, it ain't worth it. Making friends already, I see. Declan, it's been a while. Hey, careful. I'd rather not be working tonight. And you always seem to angry up everyone's blood. I'm only here to pay my respects to Nick. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, shame that. You watch yourself. I think it's time I go put up a photo at the memorial board. That's what people do, right? That's where Nick and I sat every time he dragged me out for drinks after work. Sammy! Oh, it's been ages. Tara? Oh, me? I've had this stomach thing lately, always churning. Uh... And this thing with Nick? His car went up like a Sunday ham. He burned alive, you know. Have you met Hugh? He took over the old pharmacy just after you left. Um, uh, no. The infamous Sam. I've read that article you wrote on the mine. You must have put in a lot of legwork on that. It took reading thousands of public records, but a pattern emerged of willful negligence. You are a bulldog. A dangerous man to anyone using power to exploit others. That's nice of you to say. Oh, don't hesitate to drop by the pharmacy sometime. Oh, and Sam, you... But for now, I have a feeling you're not here for us. Oh, oh, right. Don't be a stranger, Sam. <laughs> I can't believe this whole thing's still working.
yourself down Everyone here seemed to really like my dad. Of course they did, Bug. Everyone's nice in that creepy way. It's weird. Even Anna's weird. You've seen Anna? How is she? Is she here tonight? Uh, yeah. She's getting ready. Getting ready for what? Well, I don't know. Something? I've been avoiding her. She's kind of like mothering me a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. And my own mom is already too much mom. You know? Do you ever just watch people? <laughs> it's pretty much all I do. Me too. But I don't always like what I see. So Sam, how's life been treating you? The same way it treats everyone. Some days are better than others. Well, that's pretty optimistic, coming from you. I try. You staying in town long? Not really, why? You think I'm gonna disturb the peace or something? Huh. Wouldn't be your first time. Have a nice evening, Sam. So, I had to throw them all out on their ear, and only then did I realize... Ah, Samuel, my favorite ex-muckracker. Join us, join us. How was the funeral? Wasn't there, setting up for this. Everyone came, most of the town it felt like. A sea of sad, wet eyes. I gave the eulogy, felt hollow, so hollow. He worked for me for years, for years, my best reporter. What do you even say about him? He loved people, sharing things, having fun together. He'd take video games. He didn't even care if it was some cooking game or shooting game or what, as long as we were playing together. I always prefer my games analog, chess, go. You two did seem to bond over them though. It's the small things. Like he always kept his window down, said cars made him claustrophobic. That's how he stays with us, the little details. I remember the bar bets about that safe spot at Pac-Man. He, he got me one night. Yeah, got me once too. Can't believe it's real. Enough about Nicholas, enough. Tell me, how have you been, Sam? How have you really been? I spend all day doing nothing. I don't even count days, they just blur together. Nick's death barely hit me. It was like a pinprick compared to just everything. Time heals most wounds. Some it just makes worse. Sounds like you need something to pull you out of your rut. Well, I think I've taken enough of your gent's time. Go, mingle, circulate. But you must join us for an actual round later. You must. Oh, Walter, can I ask you something? Questions are the fountainhead of knowledge. Nick's crash. Was there anything suspicious about it? I asked myself the same thing. The very same thing. It did seem odd. Young Nicholas, a careful man in all things, including driving. I looked into it myself, you know what I found? What? A tragic accident with nothing amiss. I am both relieved and saddened to say. Ah. Life is rarely like a crime thriller, and while I don't mind you asking, some might find it a distasteful conversation at a man's memorial. Especially from you. I'll, uh... Keep that in mind. See that you do, my boy. See that you do. So tragic, what happened to Nick. The details are horrible. They think he didn't die on impact. Instead, he roasted, roasted to death. Not enough to damage the bones, but you know, not a pretty sight. Unless you're into that kind of thing, of course. I didn't mean to be rude, Sam. Well, you were, Tara. You can't talk about Nick like that. What did I say? It was only the truth. Poor, poor Sam. 
Now that Nick is gone, everyone in town hates you. I mean, I don't. Why would I? It's not my job you destroyed. You're not the cause of all my problems. I mean, that's what you did for pretty much all of Basswood, but not to me. So, I don't hate you. Thanks for the confidence, Booster Tara. I'll see you around. Should I have brought flowers? Do people expect me to? There was no love lost between Kathy and Nick since their divorce. But anyone can see she's taking his death hard. Kathy, uh... Sam, you actually came. I know you two haven't been together for a long time, but I'm still sorry. We hadn't been close in years. But he was my daughter's father. I'll miss him. Joan was really hurt when you left town. Nick and I were never close after the breakup, and... Jones never had a lot of friends. Yeah. Um. Maybe don't break her heart this time when you leave town. All right? Hard to make promises. I don't do well with those in Joan. I've noticed. But I'll try. Sam, I'm gonna hold you to that. You're a lot like Pac-Man, Sam. I consume everything in my path. You find every last bite. The mine closing wasn't your fault. Your investigation just hurried things up. You probably saved some lives, you know. Hi, Dad. Hi, Muley. You piece of Language. Is that a wedding ring? I didn't know you were thinking about marriage. Oh, it's just... it feels like the right thing to do. Dad, what's the point of getting married? Well, it's just one of those things people do, Bug. Here, you can play. Someone has to show you grown-ups. Video games are the realm of the young. Have you talked to Anna about this? That's kind of the point. I'll talk to her about it when I show her the ring. If you say so. Hey, just remember I'm here, right? If you need anything, Anything but my arcade secrets. Those I'll take to the grave. Sorry we lost touch. Sorry I lost touch. Rust up, big guy. This photo always looked weird. Nick could never keep a straight face. He was more her best friend than a dad. Look at us. I wonder who took that picture. Happier times. We drove straight to the sea after work on a Friday. Hell of a weekend. Bug was so small back then. Samuel! Guess I lost the bet. Bet? Yeah, that bet you'd never come back to Basswood. Not after you went careening out of town like a bat out of hell the instant that article broke bad. Okay, I'll bite. Tell me, Dennis, who did you have a standing bet with? Myself. So I guess I also won. What are you even doing here, Dennis? You and Nick become friends or something? Nope. He thought I was a drunk, which I am. And I thought he was a hack, which he was. This coming from the IT guy. Didn't know resetting passwords could give you a journalism degree. It can. But it does give me less patience for people who sling mud my way. Relax. I'm just playing. <laughs> At least tell me how you've been. If you must know, I still haven't bounced back from when Anna and I broke up. I think you mentioned she broke up with you. Yeah, but I hear you. Yeah, that's how I ended up in this shit town. Chasing a woman. Yeah, then she left and I got stuck here with two kids. 
Anyway, cheers to Nick. A man that, unlike us, people actually liked. Speaking of which... Has it really been two years since I saw her? She hasn't changed a bit. Anna? Sam! I've missed you. Why did it take so long for you to darken my doorstep? Well, I'm here now. I'll have to try and come by more often. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? Even if not everyone around here would like it. People around here have short tempers. <laughs> and long memories. But most of them mean well. Sam, the mine was gonna close anyways. Maybe any year or two, five, if the Lord has a sense of humor. It was gonna run dry or have an even bigger disaster. It wasn't your fault. I wish everyone else understood that. People are scared, mad. You were easy to blame. When my father lost his legs, nobody knew the mine wasn't following regulations. You were the only one who started asking questions. Whenever people talk about you, he always says, you did the right thing. Yeah, well, your dad's Joe. He's an oak, unmoving and annoyingly supportive. It wasn't just him. Nick thought your piece was great. He was actually jealous. He always wanted to write something that shook the pillars of heaven, as he used to put it. You know, Nick and I had moved in together, started to get serious, but I think it's only now I realize how much I cared for him. You and Nick started going out? When did this happen? A few months ago. He... He never told you? He asked me to let him be the one to say something. You two had been so close. He probably tried. I hadn't been answering his calls. Ah. That's the worst part, right? Anything broken just stays broken now. But this... Th this was all nice. The funeral, the wake. Walter did a good job. But it all just makes me feel heavy. It makes my heart hurt. Like Nick's memory has been laid on top of me and I'm still carrying him. It's hard for me to really 
just wrap my head around it. Nick being gone. Smart. Don't rock the boat when the person in the boat just lost a loved one. It's big. I can't get my head around it either. His stuff is all over my house, but he's just missing. Things without an owner. Most of it I'll probably give to Joan and Kathy, the, the throwaway. I don't even know. Sam, I'm tired, and if I'm gonna drink and cry, I wanna do it alone. I played that stupid, stupid song like I told myself I would. He said, or he used to say, it made him ache. I did it, and I'm going home. We need to catch up, though. Let's meet for coffee tomorrow and talk. Really talk. 9.30? Yeah, maybe. I'll be at the cafe across from the paper, Christina's. It was honestly nice seeing you. Samuel, come, have a round with me. I need a drink or two, or three, and then I'll go. So, Nick wasn't drunk, and me? I was drunk as a skunk. Ah, Samuel, 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 join us. We were just sharing stories about dear Nicholas. And let me get your next round. Maybe Ethan has a suggestion for a worthy spirit? Ah, oh, spirits? Oh, no, no, friends drink beer. Yes, I suppose that's fitting. To dear Nicholas. Yeah, he'd been coming in a lot lately. Sat right there, with a bad dad joke or two. <laughs> with friends, I guess? Maybe Anna. No, oh, by himself, with his laptop as his date. He never drank alone. You two were close, though, right? Tell me about the man outside the bar. He had a terrible memory. Couldn't remember names, dates, passwords. Kept his notes squirreled around him like a horde. He was always good with Joan, though Kathy did the heavy lifting. Took her to school, fed her, clothed her, and Nick would pick her up. Play dad for a few hours, mostly she'd just sit in the office drawing. He'd drop her back off with her mom after dinner. Greater men have done far less by their daughters. The friend of man, the friend of truth. The friend of age and guide of youth. Few hearts like his with virtue warmed, Few hearts with knowledge so informed. If there's another world, he lives in bliss. If there is none, he made the best of this. Burns, that from your eulogy? You know Robert Burns? And no, just something I keep on hand for toasts. Well, it's a good choice. And sorry about that, Sam, I wasn't trying to bring you down. I'm the one dwelling on these things. Wakes get sad, very sad. Death and drinking is a heady brew. Still, I'm showing jealousy for a dead man. Not the best look. Some would say being honest with yourself is the only way to honor friends. How's the family taking it? Joan and Kathy seem shaken. Kathy has a lot to deal with, now more than ever. And who can prepare for losing a parent? Not a soul. Not a single soul. It always seemed so easy for him. Every day he'd show up, smile, no matter what. Of the qualities in a good man, that one deserves to be at the top. Not a quality I possess. This isn't a place for self-pity. This is a place for dour reflection. Yes, and drinking. To Nick. He was my friend. He will be missed, but not forgotten. Hear, hear. Put that down. Kathy, what's your underage child doing drinking? You have no control over her? Ethan can lose his license. I wasn't doing anything. Don't touch me. Joan. Leave me alone. Ugh. You guys are all so, so stupid! You do not talk to people that way. There, there, there. 
I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. She's just so, so. That was quite heavy handed. I hope the little one doesn't take it to heart. I'll send her a text. Make sure she's gonna be okay. I'd say that went well. Ish. You got to chat with everyone you've been avoiding. Even if the years didn't smooth their animosity as much as I hoped. Just shut up. Coming back to Basswood was your idea. You're the one in the driver's seat, Sam. I can't make you do anything. Deep down, you've been looking for a reason to come back. It's gonna be one of those long nights inside your head, huh? Stop, stop pushing me. Stop always poking at me. You just won't quit. I'm trying to help. And helpful tip number 602, beer doesn't solve any of this. You're back out in the world, feeling emotions, fitting in. That's progress. Fuck the world. Pointless talking and more talking and no one says what they mean. Go away. Let me enjoy being miserable. Just try and make sure you don't do anything stupid. No promises. Did I take? God, what a headache. I feel like a small didn't even get under the covers. Glad I even made it to the bed. Please let there be water. Is that? No, that's not water. That is vodka, the opposite of water. No, no more beer. I need water. No, no food. I'll just throw it all up. No water, of course.
careful. Breathe. Focus. Find the way to calm down. Sam, focus. You have to find the right door. You need to steady yourself. Doing good, really good. You're almost there. Focus, choose, act deliberately. If I run, I'll keep running. Face what happened. Answers. Hide. Never happened. Going on. Get far away. Don't run. Just go. Far as fast as I can. If I run, I'll keep running. And you face what happened. Yes, answers. Good or bad, I need answers. I know what you're thinking. Stop thinking that. Pills and alcohol? You're lucky enough you didn't wake up dead. I need to know what happened last night. The last place I remember is the bar, so I'll start there. The squeaky nail gets hammered down. Maybe don't play lone wolf detective. There's too many questions about last night. All the obvious answers are bad, but worth knowing. Not all answers are worth knowing. I can't just run from whatever this is. So either help me or get out of my head. It's your life, Sam. I just live here. things change, the more they stay the same. Do you really think breaking and entering is a good idea? Used Ethan's hidden spare key, no breaking involved. I don't know if he'll see it that way. I could wait for the bar to open, or I could look for answers. I picked the latter. Ethan and his parents. I'm guessing that's his sister. He always thought they'd run the bar together.
Whoa. What happened here last night? First, look around, figure out what happened. I ended up drinking alone. So who brought that second glass? Ugh. Did I do this? Sorry, Nick. These were sent scattering. Someone thrown into them? What knocked this clock off the pillar? It seems there was a fight. That could explain the blood on my shirt. Does it mean that I was involved? I won't be able to find out without more evidence. Joel's hat. Maybe we ended up having it out after all. Definitely not the wake Nick would have wished for. Hugh's business card. Wonder why it's here. What a mess. Hope this wasn't me. DG. Dennis's initials. Was he involved in whatever happened? Wouldn't surprise me. The flowers are real. I think I've seen enough to put together the pieces of what happened last night. Just gotta think it through. At least I can always count on this place to make sense. Now to work out what happened while I was blacked out last night. I just need to think it through logically, throw out impossibilities. Until only the truth is left. I know I got into a fight, but it could have played out in many different ways. I have to think it through, find out what really happened. My memory ends here, but there's two glasses. Who was here with me? I was drinking on my own, when someone approached me. I can't remember who it was, but I know we got into a fight. Obviously. If I figure out how the fight went, I should figure out who my assailant was. I have the complete picture now. You know, the man who talks to himself has an idiot for an Fuck audience. Fuck off, Dennis. <laughs> I see why you have so many friends left in town. Yeah, you would know about that. At least my best friend never slept with my ex. Who do you blame more, huh? The backstabbing asshole or the bitch who... about Anna or Nick that way. You think you know who Nick was, Mr. Perfect? Give me a break. You have no idea. No one in this town does. What are you talking about? I'll show you. Not here. Sam. Meet me later at Sam. the- Ethan is coming back in through the front. At least I think it's him. You think it's him? I can't actually tell if you can't tell. What I know for sure is if it's Ethan, he may not be happy to find you here. So I strongly suggest you leave. And if you don't, well, tell him you're here to apologize about last night. You trashed up his bar. I don't have time to lose explaining myself to Ethan. I come back on the town's Miner's Day celebration. Well, you always did have great timing. No time to dwell on that. Focus. You tried Dennis's cell phone. No answer. 
So what now? There's that coffee date with Anna. Anna might have to wait. I want to see if anyone has seen Dennis first. I don't know, I'll play it by ear. Just remember she's expecting you. She's extending the olive branch. Don't drop it. I still have time before meeting Anna. Might as well ask if anyone saw Dennis. The perfect toy for a kid who only had imaginary friends. Hey, don't remember seeing you in town before. Passing by? I suppose. I grew up here. Been gone for a couple of years. I'm not staying long. When you managed to leave and still came back? You'd never see me again if I left. Why don't you then? Yeah, sure. I'm just gonna take my millions of dollars and make a run for it. I can barely get by, like everyone else here. Too poor to stay, too poor to leave. Ah, uh, now I've gone and made a bit of a mess. Oh, Sam, is that you? Dear, please, could you help an old doddering woman? Do I really have a choice? Or are you just gonna guilt me with the social contract till I agree? The second one. You always were a character. Okay, Muley, for two points. What is the name of the pink pony on the animated cartoon show, Prancers? The super cool one I was telling you about the other day? You know, my favorite? Uh, Polly. Polly Pony? No, that's her sister. She's totally different. Then what is her name? I'm not telling. What if the card comes up again? You really like to win, huh, Bug? All right, coffee for you and hot chocolate for the young... Is that a comic about monsters? It's about Tardigrade Man. He can survive almost anything. His only weakness is his own emotions. He's based on the microscopic tardigrades. It has eight legs and can survive star radiation. Huh. Well, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing a young woman should be reading. She says she's going to be an entomologist. What can you do? to be an entomologist. I'm going to study every bug, especially the crawlies. But tardigrade isn't a bug. It's a micro-animal. Well, good for you. Sounds like just what a young woman like you should be reading. So, uh, can we play this again tomorrow, maybe? We can play as often as you want. You promise? Yeah, I promise. Pinky swear? If you break those, you go to hell. I don't think you're supposed to be using that language. You can't break this, no matter what. You're real intense for a kid, you know that? Say it. I won't break the pinky swear, no matter what. Thank you so much. You're always such a dear. Say, Christina, have you- Oh, Sam, it's been years. It really is so nice to see you again. Yeah. Likewise, but... I wanted to come to the funeral yesterday, but just thinking about it, oh dear. Now, I know you want to interrupt her, because I want to interrupt her. So eyes on me, buddy. Happy thoughts, deep breaths. Yeah, well, uh, speaking of the... Poor Joan, losing her father at such a young age. Ah, oh, what a tragedy. I was trying to find one of those games she likes so much to cheer her up. Poor child only has Kathy now, and... Well, far from me to criticize or anything, but these last few months, Kathy hasn't been all there, if you know what I mean. Hopefully this tragedy will be a wake-up call for her to be more present. She should take a few weeks off to be with Joan. I know you would never refuse. Don't you agree? I, uh, can't say I was really listening. You do talk a lot. 
amiable as ever, I see. Well, at least you're honest about it, if nothing else. Since you obviously didn't come here to chat, what do you want? Have you seen Dennis today? Dennis? No, it's odd, actually. He usually stops in here Sunday mornings. Like how you and Nick used to come over from the paper with Anna every Friday. The three always seem so happy. Oh, but you, Sam, how have you been doing? Now, sitting in my mom's spare bedroom and decomposing into arrested development. <laughs> well, at least you're decomposing with family. You look well. I've been better, hung over this morning. You know what's good for that? Coffee. I know, Christina. Not right now. I gotta go. Hey, man. I thought I knew everyone, but I don't know you. I used to be a regular a few years ago. Oh, right. You're one of those who skipped town when the mine closed down. You could say that, yes. Town ain't changed much since then. Same old boring basswood. I know most people hate that, but I don't. It's quiet here. It's nice. So quiet, there's no rush hour, I guess. Right? The cost. Right, so the overhead would You seem be... real engrossed. Oh, I'm sorry, hon. Just balancing the books. i trying to. How you doing? You managed to keep the books balanced? About as well balanced as a snake with four balls. <laughs> that sounds uncomfortable, at the very least. <laughs> Something my grandfather used to say. Still don't know what it means, but it works in almost any situation. Anyway, the past is the past. I just accepted a big business opportunity, which makes tidying up my books in time extra important, even if it kills me. I didn't think I'd see the day where you'd consider a franchise contract. Ha! Only the day God calls for me. Have you met Hugh Kirkland already? The new pharmacist. He's helping me with a few improvements. Angel investing. Can you believe it? I actually can't. What did he ask for in return? Oh dear, I can't believe you're so cynical at your age. People in small towns do help each other. Every now and again. That's not just something that happens on made-for-TV movies. Do you still have Basswood's best coffee? Ah, oh, honey, you know we've never had that. That's over at the police station. Bess takes her coffee very seriously. Puts mine to shame. She pays out of pocket for real high-end stuff. I'd never make the margins work. Not that my margins have been cutting it lately. It's just been a bit slow the last few years. All over town, really. I know you'll still be here when the rest of the town is gone. You're too tough. Maybe. Maybe. But you know us. We always make it through. For example, I thought we'd never have another miners' day. But here we are. I feel strange being back here. I don't think I've been in your cafe in a while. Almost two and a half years. Anna kept coming in, but you stopped. You noticed that? I could tell you two dears weren't gonna make it. it broke my heart. It sounds like you knew before I did. Gotta have one eye on the customer and one eye on the books. Not that I really want to keep an eye on the books, mind you. Hmm. I say, hun, would you mind if I finish this? Oh yeah, of course. Good luck with your book balancing. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't just have you hanging around here all day like a ghost. It's a free country. Hey, don't give me that. People have been complaining, so don't let me see you here again. You fascist. What you just... I'm just doing my job. It's nothing personal. Looks like you're not the only one who started off on the wrong foot today. Sorry you had to see that. Some people you just can't reason with. Speaking of... You're still in town. You haven't seen Dennis today, have you? Why are you looking for him? I wanted to apologize for last night. Huh. I'll just stay out of his way for a day or two. 
I heard you messed up Dennis pretty good last night. I'm not judging. His head's full of smoke. Takes a while to clear it out. That person you were talking to? Who's that? A lost soul. Vagrancy isn't a crime, but loitering and trespassing are. I try to be understanding, polite, but it's hard when no one is polite back. People call you pig or fascist just for doing your job. Then they go and do things like deface the whole town. And I'm the asshole? It could get under your skin. Where's, where's you at day after day? It grinds you down. It makes you feel like you've been lifting logs all day. Nah, sorry about that. Uh, went off for a spell. Huh? Just remember, this town don't always respect the things you do. Trust me, I know. I don't want to keep you, officer. Have a good day. Keep your nose clean. Yo, get out the way. You move. I'm the one coming in. Shh, fuck you. That's enough. <laughs> Kathy and Hugh were both at the wake. I should talk to them. Oh, Sam, you here to pick up something for your, uh, condition? I have a condition? Yeah, the one that makes you the way you're always so... you. It's all right, of course. I won't tell anyone. I think I might actually have leaky gut. It's where your intestine starts to dissolve and your half-digested food starts to leak out into your blood. I'm trying to find something for it, and if it doesn't help, it can't hurt. I'm glad someone took over this whole drugstore. Can you imagine? This town without a pharmacy would be like, well, me with a hole in my gut. <laughs> I'll just check the internet when I get home. It'll tell me what to get. It was nice talking to you, Tara. Oh, yes, <laughs> always. Ah, Samuel. Sorry about Richard. He's always a little on edge. I'm surprised to see you up and about after the night you had. Honestly. <laughs> I was afraid you'd end up like your friend. You were quite inebriated. Honestly, I don't remember last night. You saw me blackout drunk. Not my finest hour. I would say not. After your barroom brawl, I did my best to prevent you from following that other man outside. And I tried to get you to hand over your keys, but you would have none of it. Sorry about that. The man I had a fight with, Dennis. Have you seen him today? Seen him? No. No, can't say I have. Thanks anyways. That article you wrote, it's done this town a lot of good. How do you figure? The mine was a band-aid on a torn artery. Sometimes, doing what is unpopular is still the moral choice. You probably believe that. I'd offer you something for that hangover, but I find in some cases, time is the best medicine. My mom used to say that all the time. Now she only says it a lot. Sounds like a wise woman. Listen to her advice. Now, you have a good one, young man. Was there anything else you needed, by the way? I have to ask, why move here, of all places? You know, here, Basswood. A blink and you miss this town. People move out of Basswood, not in. The town I used to work in had a hundred other pharmacies in it. Oh, you'd make sales, but you don't get to know anyone, ever. 
Plus, if I'm being honest, I always imagined I'd retire in a small mountain town. I heard you're helping out with the celebration today. Naturally. It's the town's biggest homegrown tradition. <laughs> I've become quite a fan myself. I never got into it. No. A celebration of hard work and building something with your own two hands? Well, it's quite romantic. I'm from floors it myself, but it has that universal appeal. If it works for you. Samuel, I saw you talking to Walter. Can you ask him something from me? What do you want from him? I was hoping the Basswood Jungle could run a piece about me. You see, some of the older folks see me as an outsider still. Can't say I'm surprised. I'll think about it. I really appreciated the chat. But I'm afraid it's time I get back to work. Do come see me again. Hey, Kathy. Yo, Sam. What can I do you for? It's just... one of those days. Ran into Declan outside. He ranted about some thugs. Declan? He's testy because he wants Miner's Day to go well. Like in the old days, without any trouble. But really, Sam, I'm in the middle of my shift. Do you need something? So, the wake, I, um... Uh, none of us were on our best behavior. Nick would have been happy you showed up, no matter how anything else went. I left early myself to go check on Joan. Did you have to say that fantasy about her father being murdered was real? That's not what I... I just want her to be a little girl, not a little Sam Higgs, sneaking around and getting into trouble. And now all she can talk about is how you're going to prove that she's right. Sorry. I know it's not your fault, but I just don't... I don't... I don't know what to do with her. She's my daughter. And I feel like I'm losing her. I gotta go. If the boss sees me John instead of working, I'll get an earful. Hey, Bug. What are you doing out here? Hey, Muley. <laughs> Waiting for my mom to get off her shift at the pharmacy. Drawing. I got a new journal after I left the old one somewhere. <laughs> See? Did you get home okay last night? Yeah. I bike everywhere. It's not like anything scary bad happens in Basswood. At least not normally. Um, any word on my dad? Did you really look into it? Sorry, Bug. Other things have been getting in the way. Yeah. Everyone keeps saying things like that. Sorry. I know you're trying. It's just this town, you know? This place, it feels like I'm suffocating. I can't breathe, I can't think, I can't stand my mom. I don't like school, well, except for science. And just, when I imagine myself in the future, I just don't, I don't know. I don't see this place or these people. I'm somewhere else, anywhere else. I know it's stupid, just... It's not stupid. If you want, you can go anywhere in the world. Have adventures, fall in love. I mean, that's what I've been told anyway. Gross. Okay, well that other stuff sounds okay though. Thanks for listening. I got grown up stuff I gotta do. I've got kid stuff I gotta see about, so we're both busy. It's tough seeing her like this. Seems she got older by six years and just two. Hey, can I ask you something? Hello, young man. Of course you can ask. No promise answering. Why do you bother cleaning the memorial? Well, everything has to look its best for today. Especially the minor. I really didn't think it was going to happen this year. Good thing Mr. Kirkland decided to help out. 
And besides, that way people can remember with pride we used to be rednecks. That matters to you? It should matter to every West Virginian. And why do you think it should matter so much? How many West Virginians does it take to screw in a light bulb? This doesn't sound like a history lesson. You answer my question, I'll answer yours. So, how many West Virginians? I don't know. How many? Three. One to replace the light bulb, two to complain about how the old one was better. <laughs> that might be a little too close to home. My favorite jokes have always been the ones that make me feel a little sad. So, you still want to hear the story? I'm all ears. This fella here is a reminder of when coal miners stood together. You see, back a hundred years ago, you'd be safer in the trenches than down in the mines. You didn't sit right with our boys. They demanded better conditions. Of course, the corporations being what they are refused and sent strike breakers. The mine wars. Miners came out in force, union men. Met the strike breakers over in Logan County. That's right. 10,000 strong. And it all came to a head at Blair Mountain. The miners tied red bandanas around their necks for solidarity. Brotherhood. At least a hundred men died in that battle. Blood spill for what we have now. <laughs> oh. It definitely makes for one hell of a story. There's heroes everywhere. Heroes who died for what I have. So, I do my part. Feel I owe it to them. I get it. I think you do. Anyway, I get back to it. Gonna give her a real spit shine. You take care now. Joe. Sam? You old bridge jump how you been? What's the calendar say? Two years, Joe. It's been two years. Too long. Heard you showed up yesterday. Boys give you trouble? Uh, maybe a little. But don't worry. It's hard for me to blame them. After the mine closed, well, it ain't easy to put food on the table. Don't let that weigh on you. No one else has lost their legs recently. So, how have you been holding up? Terribly. But Anna keeps me young. How'd you ever let her get away? Uh, you probably know better than me. I heard all about it. Still, I always liked you. Straight shooters are a rare breed these days. I like a man that can look me in the eye and say what he means. I noticed you weren't at the bar last night. Went home after the service. The yeah, cripple takes it out of you. Normally, I'd be rotting away in my recliner, but... I like to come out, see the decorations. Pay my respects to old iron here. This town's been a mining town before I was born, and it'll be one after I die. It's good to get out and celebrate your roots every now and then. I don't have the same perspective on Miner's Day that other people have. No, I suppose you wouldn't. You haven't seen Dennis today, have you? I wish. Just about the only guy I could talk hockey with. Not football? I want to talk football. I could just grab anybody on the street. Dennis actually enjoys a man sport. But no, I haven't seen him. I have places I need to be, but it's good to see you. Just promise you won't wait two years before saying boo again. <laughs> I'll do my best.
glad you came. Of course. I said I would. I can still be glad about it. So, uh, I hear you got in a fight after I left the wake? Honestly, if it happened again, I'd have hit him again. He was asking for it. That does sound like Dennis. Yeah, speaking of, you haven't seen him today, have you? Why? Afraid your powerful blows laid him up? <laughs> so, what are you working on? <laughs> I'm working on an article. On how nature does its best to reclaim the land after a strip mining operation. Why are you looking for Dennis? I can tell something has you spooked. I can always tell. Go on. Tell her. You could honestly use a non-imaginary person to confide in. She might slow me down. Or try to involve the cops. She might do those things, yes. Or she might be someone who you can trust. Who can help. I woke up today and... My shirt was covered in blood. Blood? What happened? I don't know. Last night, pills and alcohol mixed. It's all a blur. That's why I'm looking for Dennis. Have you tried the Basswood Jungle? He likes to work weekends. No, not yet. I'll do that right now. Sam, is there anything I can do to help? Oh, uh, nah. I'm just gonna do my own thing. Samuel, Samuel, my young soul, are you still haunting this pallid town? There are a few things I have to clear up, some last boxes to check. Careful now. They say in the details lies the devil. I don't think that's what that's supposed to mean. Perhaps not, perhaps not, but something to think about nonetheless. I'll keep that in mind. You know, I'm glad I ran into you. If I may bend your ear for a moment. I've been thinking lately about age. Life, the turn of the clock. No one gets sharper with age. When do you think it's time to hang up the saddle? A true cowboy rides until the last day they can ride. I had a feeling you'd say that. I have a lot to think about. Thank you for your ear, but soon I must have sconed. Sunday lunch with Mother is sacred. Call on me anytime, young Samuel. Anytime. Locked. I should check the back. My, my, my. Look what we got here. Is that Sam Higgs? Trying to get back in a newspaper game? I thought you got the message last night. Of course, it was hard to tell. Considering you let Declan do your talking for you. Look, fellas. You know, Basswood can be a dangerous place. Well, so maybe consider just getting before something bad happened to you. I'll leave when I'm good and ready. Just make it sooner rather than later. De Declan's right down the street. Watch yourself while you're in Basswood, because we'll be watching you. This place used to be my home, or at least felt like it. Where is Dennis? He should be in here. Dennis! Dennis. What happened? Who?
is Dennis's office. There must be some clues around. Solve this. Figure this out before Dennis dies again and the panic overwhelms you. Chest wound. What kind of weapon did this? Gunshot. The bullet went clean through. The killer must have been close. Where did the bullet go? The bullet stopped here. Small caliber like Dennis's gun. I need to find that gun. Sam, stop it! Come back to reality! But I... I... You didn't do anything! Dennis was already dead when you arrived, can't you see? Dennis was shot, and you don't even own a gun! How could you have done it? All you did was move his body, which is how your shirt got stained. Think about it, Sam. Calm down and think! You're right. I can see it. Blood on the shirt was Dennis's, but I didn't kill him. I found him dead. Blackout drunk, panicked. I stumbled to my car. Luckily, I ended up back at the hotel and not wrapped around a pole. Now, I know I didn't do it. The police, though, may not feel the same way. I need to search the area. See if I can find out why someone would murder Dennis. Dennis's computer is still signed in. Seems like a good place to start. Emails between Nick and Dee. They're talking in codes. Nothing stated clearly. They didn't want to risk anyone learning of their meetings. Smart. Someone was watching. Whatever Nick was looking into seemed big, but he said it fizzled out. The puzzle comes together. Dennis was reading everyone's emails. He found out that Nick hadn't stopped his investigation like he'd told Walter. And that Nick was still talking to some informant. Then he decided to tell me. And now he's dead. I need to look through any notes Nick left in his office and check Walter's computer. They have to have something for me to go on. You didn't deserve this. No one deserves this. The only thing she cared about then was looking at bugs and drawing them. Nick's computer is missing. Took it home to work, or stolen? Nick, Anna, and me. I don't need everyone staring at me.
four digits. Wonder if that's the new code for the archives. There might be something around here that hints at Walter's password. Hopefully his password reminder isn't some esoteric book reference. Ugh. My heart's desire. It could mean a person, but also a place. Walter was never tech savvy. He just uses words that mean something to him. There's a good chance there's a clue in his office. Walter had this article framed after he saw the boost in traffic the Haven got. Basswood is his blood and soul. Wouldn't surprise me if he said it as his password. So strange how calm it is out there when... Well, this happened. He loves all his first editions, but Alice in Wonderland always came out on top. Wouldn't be surprised if that was his password. Good for Walter that Judith is doing all right. She means the world to him. So much so that she could be his password. <laughs> his granddad rock a thing? If so, Walter and Anna are both into it. Prin never looked happy a day in her life. Been Walter's cat for years. Maybe he set her name as his password. And I'm in. Let's see what secrets you got in here, Walter. Mostly standard so far, by the book. I see why Walter wasn't worried. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Nick would never drive without his seatbelt on. And he always kept his window open. The car really burned, though that's very uncommon in most crashes. So, Walter got the police report from Bess. Nick was supposedly drunk at the wheel, which doesn't sound like him and his seatbelt was off and his windows up, which both sound very wrong. Walter seemed to buy it, but I don't know if I do. I think it's time I check Nick's office. Hope he still leaves his notes out. Thanks, bug. Your obsessive snooping pays off. Nick always kept extensive records of his work. He was almost obsessive. How could there be so little information regarding his last investigation? Nick was looking into the impact the closure of the mine had on Basswood. What was he looking for? Nick was traveling all over. Train tickets, hotel bills, out of state even. He was tracking something, or someone. Nick had a contact. Same name as in the email. He was onto something big. What Nick was looking into was something big and dangerous. It's why he was so careful. So, did you come to the logical conclusion to this mess we're in? Just a hint. We should get out of town immediately. Dennis tried to talk to me about Nick, and that's what got him killed. Exactly, like I said, you should get out of town. And the details of Nick's death, it doesn't sound like him. Two years is a long time, Sam. He may have changed more than you know. Changed decade-long habits? I need to go to the crash site. Just remember, if you're right... Sam? What's happening? Dennis. That's Dennis. What happened? Is he... Anna, I is listen he... to me. Anna, I did not kill Dennis. Oh my god, no. It's... How could this happen? He died last night. Hours ago. Not much we can do right now. He asked me to meet him here after, but I was so drunk I arrived late. And the person that actually showed up killed him. Your bloody shirt was clearly from this. That means you were here yesterday. It links you to the crime scene. And you've been running around town all morning asking about Dennis. It won't look good. We need to call the police. They'll think I killed him. I thought I did at first. I have no alibi. This is not about you. Dennis had a family. They have to know what happened. It's the right thing to do. Do you want Walter to find his body come Monday? She has a point. Someone is gonna find him eventually. Involving the police would only slow us down. I'll be more efficient on my own. Efficient and possibly friendless. You've already trusted Anna once. I suggest you keep on that road. Okay, but not that phone. 
Use one of the landlines here and don't leave your name. You remember I'm a journalist, right? I know how to keep things confidential. Also, I think whoever did this might be linked to Nick's accident. This is about Nick? The crash? I'm going to the crash site to confirm my suspicions. I'm going with you. I don't know if that's a good idea. You trusted me before. It's only fair I do the same for you. I'll call the cops from here so they can't track us. All right. Here we are. <laughs> it barely looks like anything happened. It's been a week, but we'll find something. I know we will. Is it okay if I stay here? I don't think I'm ready to- Sure. I doubt I'll be good company anyway. You mean your over-focused to the point of non-reactive thing? I remember, especially how you always end up being right somehow. I hope. I don't know what I'm hoping for. Yeah, me neither. This is the place. Nick, I'll get to the bottom of this. First, gather the clues. Cold, hard, plain facts. It's the only way I'll know what really happened. The report states Nick was driving under the influence of alcohol. He was startled by an animal. And drove through a road sign before crashing into a tree. don't add up. fits the evidence. The police report was wrong. you quit. I did. So, did you find anything? Nick, he was murdered. I'm sorry, I don't... The police report was clearly wrong. Fucking... Anna? Here, just... 
Joe, it's Sam. Where's Anna? Is she okay? Yeah, she's right here. She's just a bit busy. I need her to come back immediately. There's been a break-in at her place. What? Are you alright? What happened? I wasn't there when it happened. Just arrived. Called the police, then called my daughter. We're on our way. Someone broke into your house. Okay, so, about Dad. Don't tell him what we found. Please, it'd just worry him for no reason. How are you holding up? After finding out what we found out. I'm guessing about as well as you. Not great. Let me go calm my father down. I'm pretty sure he's ready to call the National Guard. Anna, maybe give her a few moments with Joe before you barge in. Also, take a few moments for yourself as well. You used to live here, and now some other guy, Nick of all people, was living here. With her, things are different. She's different. You're different. I'm different. But am I different enough to not fall into old patterns? Keep in mind, Sam, no matter how much you want to, you can never go home again. It's fine, Dad. I can handle this. Someone broke into my daughter's house and you want me to just sit by and wait? Yes, that is exactly what I want you to do. Don't you have an appointment? I always have an appointment. I'm at the doctor's more often than I'm home. Sam, talk some sense into my daughter here. You know, Anna, Joe's pretty sharp for an old man who can't walk. That's right. And Sam here's got a good mind for a fool-headed kid. <laughs> Dad, I love you. And I love that you want to protect me, but please, it'll be okay. Go to your doctor's appointment. The police will be here soon. I'm just belly aching. It's your house, your rules. I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Though before I head off, Sam, you tell me if something was going on, right? Anna's brave and she's strong, but she's also stubborn. Dad, I told you I can take care of myself. And I'm old enough to know when things ain't right. You tell me now, Sam. You tell me if my little girl is in danger. I can't watch over her anymore, so I need you to keep her safe. Stop talking about me like I'm not here. Joe, I don't know. She's I... all I have left. Promise me you'll protect her. I need your word. Wow. Heavy. Joe's really laying on the paternal guilt. I can't promise something like that. I don't know what might happen. He just wants to feel like someone is looking out for her. I can't blame him. And what if I can't keep that promise? Then refuse. All I know is I personally couldn't say no to a desperate father. I still can't hide anything from you. Sam, don't. I won't lie, Joe. There is something going on. It could be dangerous, but I'll make sure Anna doesn't get mixed up in it. All right, I'm trusting you on this. I'm not some kid. I decide what I get mixed up in. You can't blame me for looking after you. I just didn't want you to worry. You're both so patronizing. I'm heading inside. See how bad it is. I think the happiest I ever saw Anna was the day she bought this place. I want everyone to know this house is sold. You're mine. I own you now. <laughs> it might be 200 years before it's paid off, but it's mine. So, when can I start moving my own stuff in? After you finish carrying all my stuff in. Sure, but that means I get to choose which side of the bed I'm sleeping on. What? No! You're gonna sleep on the side closest to the door. Why is that? 
So if someone breaks in, you can fight them off. And maybe because I like being near the window. Somehow I feel like it's entirely the second thing and not at all the first. <laughs> we can talk about all this after my stuff's inside. But all your stuff's so heavy. Which is why I need your help. Don't slack, Sam. <laughs> this house isn't going to decorate itself. And I want you to be part of that. Anna is not well. This time, at least, try to be there for her. Anna? Um, Anna, are you, are you okay? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no. She needs you, buddy. Needs me? I don't even think she knows I'm here. What am I supposed to do? Something, anything. It's the thought, the effort. Get her a drink. Just show her you're here. I'm not sure how a drink will make her feel better about murders and break-ins. But I guess I've heard worse ideas. She kept the drinks in the kitchen, in one of the pantries. She normally keeps some drinks in the pantry. It's been a while, Sam. Things have changed around here. You feel like looking at old keepsakes? No. Ah, here's where she keeps the drinks. She used to drink this every day in middle school. Brings her back to being 10. Her go-to soft drink. She actually likes to drink this stuff straight. Could do. Don't stress about what drink you bring her. It's just bringing it that matters. People in film noirs always offer a stiff drink in times like this. Might work. On the bright side, I don't think it's possible to make her feel worse. You're not helping. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. Thanks. Finally, there. This feels like the only part of the house I recognize. Whatever punk broke in here wrecked it. Sam, what are you doing? I called for dinner like a dozen times. It's gonna get cold. I am not your mom, you know? Working on an article is no reason to ignore basic politeness, Sam. 
Fine. You can eat your dinner cold for all I care. I'm done waiting for you. Chocolate helps everyone feel better. That's sweet. I'd assumed you'd already gone to look around and, I don't know, think. This is just... This is just so fucked. Nick? My house? Sam, you should distract her. Get her talking or thinking about anything else. My stuff, everything is trashed. Is this, like, the worst coincidence? Or is it related to Nick's death? Did his murderer break into my house? God. You're not alone. Here, have a drink. It'll help. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's helping a bit. Hey, are you feeling better? Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Sorry, I just kind of lost it for a second there. Yeah. I mean, careful, Sam. You know you can be indelicate. She needs your support right now. I mean, it hasn't been an easy week, you know? And I've got the feeling it isn't over yet. She needs support. Something solid. Whatever happens, you're not alone. We'll face it together. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I needed to hear that. Reminding her she has people to lean on is a great start. This whole thing is a mess. But honestly, it's been a mess for a while. Like, everything was fine, you know? Nick moved in, it was nice, but lately he just closed himself off. He'd been gone most nights, at the bar or the fishing shack, come home late refusing to talk about his work. It got unbearable. It was almost like I was living with you all over again. It doesn't feel good, but she needs to get this off her chest. Don't be too harsh on her. I do have my part of responsibility in this, but so do you. I know that. But you'd shut me out. Then suddenly you'd ambush me emotionally. Look, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm, I'm not trying to fight. It's just having you in the house. It's, it's bringing back a lot of things. We had a good time. So many memories here, both bad and great. We did have a good time, yeah. But then came Dad's accident, the mine investigation, your proposal. I still feel horrible about how it all happened. But you... You understand why I said no, right? Face it, Sam. If you had paid attention, you'd have known she wasn't going to say yes. I know, the timing wasn't great. Your Dad's accident, the mine investigation, me being hated by all of Basswood. That's... that's not why I said no. You knew I didn't want to get married. I told you before, I... I never liked the idea. Never wanted a ring. When you asked, I just... I just thought I was with someone who didn't know me. That terrified me. And then... It ended so abruptly, you and I. I don't think I ever took the time to really process what happened. I wonder if it would have ended the same way with Nick. If my relationship with him was as doomed as my relationship with you. The way Nick closed himself off to me the last few weeks. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I can't bear to live with someone, to truly share my life, to make compromises and all that. She's feeling guilty about what happened. She shouldn't bear that burden alone. It wasn't doomed. It's just like every relationship. It requires a lot of work from everyone involved. Whether people are ready to put in the work, well, that's different. I think we weren't. Not really. At least I wasn't. 
Good to see you realized that. Maybe. We were... we were younger. Different. It feels like a lifetime has passed. It doesn't matter anyway, now does it? He's dead, and... whatever we had is done. And we're on our own if we're gonna find out who killed him. I'm not backing down from this, no matter what we find. What about you? Yeah, I mean... You can count on me, Anna. We're in this until the end. That's good. That's really good. Let's see this to the end, and... Well... We'll see what happens when we get there, right? Whatever happens, we're in this together. Can you take a look upstairs? I still need a moment. Let me make sure I'm done crying and all that. Take your time. I'll tell you if anything's wrong. Thanks, Sam. Why is it so dark in here? This room feels so different now. It felt like mine once, but it never was. I guess Anna must have left it on? But she had her laptop with her. Is this Nyx? As if her week wasn't bad enough already. I should erase it. But then the police wouldn't get the burglar's handwriting. This used to be her old bed. First thing she bought when she settled in. Come on, work, you piece of junk! I know you're awake. No, I'm not. Then how are you talking? I'm a celebrated sleep doctor. Come on, get up. I need your help. Did you try rebooting it? That's honestly all I got. I have tried that. If I don't get this done by noon, Walter won't run the article. What do I do? Okay, okay. Let me see it. Thank you. It just won't respond to anything. Do you want a back rub while you work? As your hero, it's the least you could do. I'll do more than that, my white knight. Oh, you will, my princess of the typefaces. Of course. When you fix it. Is someone downloading something off Nick's laptop? I think whoever trashed your house just trashed me. Can you stand? Yeah. Yeah. The headache isn't as bad as the one I had this morning. I couldn't get a good look at them. They just sprinted out of the house, and I heard some weird loud engine drive off. Well, whoever it was, they were dumping data off Nick's computer. I must have interrupted them. There's no trace of whatever he took. So what do we even do now? We need Nick's backups, if he has any. Did he ever do anything like that? Boxes in the attic, files to the cloud, another computer? Did he have anywhere besides here and the basswood jungle he kept things? No. No, I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't. Actually, over the last few months, remember I mentioned Nick has been going out a lot to that old fishing shack his family owns. I know the one. I went there with Nick and Bug a few times. He went mostly in the evenings. Most nights, really. Said he was night fishing. But if he was secretly using it as a second office... It'd be worth taking a look. Hello? Yeah? Hello? 
Your father called, said there'd been a break-in. Couldn't they have gotten here two minutes ago? They'll arrest me if they found Dennis's body. You go out the back. I'll talk to Bess and keep her busy. If you're sure, I'll go to the fishing shack. It sounds like if Nick was hiding something, it might be there. Sorry, I was just in the bathroom. Be right out. Go. Nick's fishing shack. A lot of memories here. Good memories. Anna said he'd been sneaking off here to work on something. I almost hope I don't find anything. Nick, what were you up to? You know, fishing's a lot like life. Practice, patience, and perseverance hooks you the big one. Dad, not everything is a life lesson. <laughs> Actually, I was talking to Muley here. Oh, that's fine. He's got a lot to learn. You know, I'm better at fishing and life than you are. <laughs> Whatever you say, Muley. Oh, worms are so cute. You sure are, bud. Can you hook me another one? Can't catch a fish without bait. Um, I, I uh, I don't want to hurt it. Come on, it's just a worm. Here, a bug, just hand them over and I'll bait it. No! I'd be an accomplice then! Don't worry about it. The point of fishing isn't to catch anything anyways. Bug? Muley? How did you... Does my mom know? Does your mom know what? What is this? Mom doesn't know. Good. I've decided to leave town. Bug, that's... This is not a good idea. I've got food for five days. I'll hitchhike and bike down to Virginia. Do you have any idea how far that is? About 80 miles to get down to my Aunt Lisa. My mom hates her. Don't try to stop me. You can't leave like this. Not without telling anyone. <laughs> oh yeah? Why not? That's what you did. She's serious about this. Careful, Sam. This is not a drill. Maybe try to bring up her mother again. Is there something wrong with your mom? No. I'm running away because things are so great. Plus, I know what she'll say. Calm down, think of the common good. She doesn't do anything, just sits around, takes her back pain pills, and stares at the TV like a lump. Well, that was a miss. When it comes to this kid, your instinct is better than mine. The mother, though, we should have a talk with her later. Look, I'm not a child anymore. I'm not asking for your permission. There's nothing for me here. Leaving is gonna hurt the people you care about the most. The way I left was selfish. You're not selfish. The Joan I knew couldn't even hurt a worm, let alone her own mother. I... It's not like I want to hurt her. She just works all the time and then she's too out of it and never listens to me. I think I'm done depending on others. My dad I could rely on, but he's gone. There's nothing else for me around here. I was wrong yesterday. She's not in denial, she's scared. Something terrible happened to him, but no one listens to me, no one cares. I care. I believe you and I'm investigating like you asked. <laughs> yeah, I know about the wake. You approached a few people, but you dropped it as soon as it got uncomfortable. Anyway, it's not like I expected any different. This place is full of gutless patronizing adults, and I'm sick of this dumb little town. It's choking me, and I need fresh air. I need some place I can think, not here. 
Sounds like Basswood really failed this kid. I mean, what am I supposed to do tomorrow? Or the day after? In 10 years? You ever consider journalism? You have a mind for investigation. Um, isn't it kind of dying? Yeah, that's what makes it beautiful. Fighting to bring people truth in a world that doesn't care about it. <laughs> kind of sounds like you really want to be a journalist. Look, I don't know if you're trying to make me stay or make me into you or my father. You're just telling me what I want to hear or what you think I want to hear. I just want the truth for once from someone. I'm wasting my time here with you. Bug. Don't touch me. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of this town. And so I'm going and you can't stop me. Sam, we have to do something. She just wants honesty. She doesn't care about bullshit. I can relate to that. I'll tell her what we found out about Nick's death. You can't do that. You're the adult. She's the child. Do you want her to start looking for the people who killed her father by herself? Do the responsible thing. Make her stay. It's for her own good. You were right, Bug. Your father didn't die in that crash. Someone killed him and covered it up, made it look like an accident. Now, I don't know who did it yet or why. That's why I came here. That was maybe too much, Sam. She's a kid. I was right. You were right. I need you to not tell anyone, though. I won't. I won't tell anyone. Not even my And mom. I need you to stay at home. I will. I'm gonna go home right now. Thank you, Sam. I don't know if that was a good idea. <sighs> Me neither. But hey, it worked. Now that I've kept your daughter from skipping town, let's see if you've kept anything hidden out here, Nick. Whoever killed Nick, I probably know him, grew up with him. Even if you don't know them, they know you. Nick, Dennis, gone. A stone cold killer walks the streets of Basswood. Things like this can really make you feel isolated, make you realize that at the end of the day, you're in this alone. What a fishy hiding spot, Nick. Always did love your cliches. Like many people, Nick kept a few guns, but never at home and always locked up. A prescription for opioids with Kathy's name on it? These are pretty heavy duty painkillers. Very addictive. Joan wasn't just acting up. Kathy has a problem. It has to be the same D he was talking to in his emails. Looks like some kind of reminder Nick left for himself. A reminder of what? An article by Anna about a place called The Cove. Seems it's kind of a commune for outcasts just outside of Basswood. He always kept his favorite rod in this special ready-to-go bag to protect it. Nick, what were you hiding in this bag that's so important you had it locked up? Nick's note mentioned a caterpillar. I think I just found it. Let's see what we have here. A 
That's a lot of cash. More than Nick could make in a decade. Opioids. From D? Nick, were you looking into drug trafficking? Nick was gathering at the cove. And that's how he found his informant, D. It's the person he met the night he died. I just need to figure out who it is. Richard. A.K.A. Dicky. A.K.A. D. Looks like I found who I was looking for. Nick suspected a drug ring flourished here in Basswood after the mine closed. He had an informant. Dicky. Probably a low-level drug dealer. And he also had a lot of cash on hand. More than a reporter should. Dickie set up a meeting with Nick, and now Nick's dead. Dickie may be the only person who knows what really happened. I need to find him. He lives at this place, The Cove. Or he did. Anna wrote that article on it. She has to know where it is. Bess barely asked about the break-in. She seemed more focused on your fight with Dennis. I'm on top of the suspect list. Or at least I would be if I was her. Bess said I should call her if I found you. She believes you're dangerous. You were right back at the Basswood jungle. I think we're on our own. They'll try to arrest me now. We have to find Dickie. I can't let Joan down. I'm sure Dickie's still there. He had no other place to go. What are you two doing? The longer you run from the police, the worse it'll be when they catch up with you. Explain everything. Show them all you found. That's what a sane person does. So, how should we handle finding Dickie? You and I are gonna figure something out together. Don't worry. Or worry a little, just not a ton. <laughs> oh, trust me. I'm worried a ton. Just not a shit ton. We just need to be careful and look out for each other. This town has like 17 people in it. You've met the killer. I'm not saying you have to run and hide. Just, that's enough. What's enough? Uh, enough of a plan. I think we have enough of a plan. Do we? I just get so angry that someone did this. Killed my friends, invaded my home. It's the worst feeling. Like part of my soul has been stolen. We need to find out who did this. I need to take back from them what they took. I need to find some small piece of feeling safe again. If that even makes any sense. It's the knowing they might get away with it. The lie they made up being seen as true that just burns a hole right through me. Yeah. You're right, I think. Then I think something else ten seconds later. Because you've got this. Easy. Look at you. So together. You got so drunk, you've forgotten anything that could have been remotely useful. Your friends are turning up dead. That's not fair. Shut up! Sam! I... sorry. I didn't... I just... I didn't mean it that way. Don't... don't take all of this out on me. So you're just going to keep telling me off? Disregard my advice? Well, if you think you know better, Sam, no reason for me to linger. <laughs> Enjoy your little investigation without me, Sam. Don't get us killed, okay? Here. This is the cove. Huh? Get your head on straight. The cove. We're here. Right. 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 Not really, but it's not like I have much of a choice. Sam, if you need to take a moment. No, let's, let's do this. Who the hell are you? Anna. 
What are you doing here? Tyler, you look healthy. You ain't the only one surprised I'm still alive. Who's the narc? I'm Sam. Was I talking to you? This is Sam. He's a friend. Yeah, lucky for him or I'd have thrown his ass out already. So what are you two here for? We're here trying to find Dickie. Yeah, someone always is. You tried looking up your own ass? Tyler. I don't say I never did nothing for you. You'll want to talk to Lynette. Thank you. Really. Yeah, I know. Is he always like this? Uh, he's pretty much the gatekeeper around here. Interviewed him last time I came by. I'm going to talk to Lynette. She's kind of in charge. I'll go see what I can find. Okay, but be careful. People only end up here if they have nothing left to lose. Ow! Watch it! The place is full of wood shavings. Why do you have an open flame? I don't remember asking for your opinion. Fair enough. I'm Kayla. What do you want? I'm looking for a guy named Dickie. Don't know where he is and don't care. He might be off with his stupid quad bike thing for all I know. Quad bike thing? Loud, goes off road, has four wheels, makes you look like an asshole. Occasionally leaks gasoline and would have burned down the whole camp. Tyler didn't save his sorry ass with his fire extinguisher. Well, I'll see you around. I don't feel like you have to. Dickie must have one of those off-road quads. He could still be here right now. And it was going well. It's just, I don't know, hard. It doesn't get easier. Oh, this is Sam. He's a friend. We used to date. Well, that much is painfully obvious. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. I'm Lynette. What are you here for, Sam? We're looking for Dickie. Yes, Anna told me. She's not gonna help us find him. I do not throw people to the wolves. And you, Sam, are a wolf. You've never had any trouble with him. This is my land. All those who have lost their home are welcome to it. As long as they can follow a few simple rules. Even if Dickie lives on the fringe of our community, he is one of us. All he wants is to be left alone. I would think you, of all people, would understand. I read the article Anna wrote about you and this place. Wait, you read it? When? Nick's fishing shack. Oh. What led you to create this community? I found there were souls in need of help after the mine closed. The world is a cruel place. We all need a touch of kindness in our lives. You're definitely that, Lynette. Thank you, my dear. But don't sell yourself short. Your article brought Kayla here, and even some generous donations have come in. Did you get your answer, Sam? What kind of donations? Food and clothes, mostly. But jobs are hard to come by these days. We must rely on the kindness of others, even if their kindness comes and goes in waves. I'll go now. Thanks for indulging me. Naturally. The clock's ticking. Cops will start looking for me soon. So Dickie lives here, but his place should be isolated from the others. I'm getting there. Just need a bit more info to close in on Dickie. Sup? You a friend of Kayla's or something? Name's JR, I'm... Wait. You're that fucking reporter! I was. Fucking up everyone's lives. <laughs> That's a real talent. Former miner. Get the fuck out of my face. Just here to ask a couple of questions. Do I look like a fucking tour guide? You keep bothering me, and I'm gonna stop being nice. Tyler, right? Jackass, right? Some people call me that, yeah. Huh. I'll bet. 
How do you end up in a place like this? None of your goddamn business. How did you and Anna meet? You're not the type she normally hangs out with. Maybe you're not the type she normally hangs out with. You ever consider that? Trust me, I have. Just tell me where Dickie is and I'll leave. Either that or you'll leave when I break your face. Look, Anna's a friend. She spent some time down here with us to do that interview thing. Told my story, did good by me, by us. And that guy that came after her, Nick, he's solid. Came down here three or four times. Taught me a great recipe for bass. But you, you're just some asshole. Dickie's one of ours. Don't think you're getting anywhere near his trailer. So beat it before I break your knees. So Dickie is in one of the trailers. That narrows down my search. I know enough to make an educated guess. Quad, isolated. Someone lives here. That's where Dickie's hiding. Time to pay him a visit. I only know you by reputation. And what I know, I don't like. You don't get to just gallivant around here however you damn well please. So back the hell off, or I will fuck you up. Look, I just want to talk to the guy who lives right over there. I don't give a shit what you want. Back the fuck hey, off. Hey, man. This guy ain't worth it. Just forget him. But if he doesn't get the message soon, I'll help you work him over. Got it. Got it. I'm gonna get past these two if I want to reach Dickie. I need to get them to look away from his trailer. Around Kayla's tent is the most efficient spot for a distraction. It's at the opposite end of the camp. They'd have their backs turned to me. But I still need a place to hide. They'd suspect me right away. Cabin stands right in the middle of the camp, far enough from everyone for them to not notice me. Close enough to reach Dickie before they come back. It'd be my best shot. I have a plan. All that remains is to figure out the details. I saw this picture in Ethan's bar, only intact. Guess I know who's been cut out. With all the flammable lacquer and varnish, this thing catching fire is sure to divert attention. It's out of the way, so no one should get hurt, but there will be lots of chaos. I just need to work out the exact details. The statue will be collateral damage once the fire spreads. No other option. It won't take long for the fire to reach those, and when it does, they'll go up in flames in a second. Need to account for that. Varnish. Can's empty. Probably used on that statue. Very flammable stuff. I can get the fire going, but it won't do any good if they put it out right away. I need to check for ways they could put it out. The fire needs to burn long enough to distract, but small enough to be manageable. Don't want to see the whole place go up in flames. If I sabotage Lynette's old hose, she'll have to find something else to put the fire out with. You're Ethan's sister, right? Was his sister. How do you stop being someone's sister? He tried to make every decision in my life. The same as the rest of my old family. Though Ethan was by far the most suffocating. I didn't like who I was when I was around him. I didn't like either of us. So you two don't ever talk to each other anymore? Not really. Well, the last time we did, I ended up coming here. Maybe was his sister was harsh. You can tell him we've talked, if you gotta. You seem to enjoy wood sculptures. You'd have to be an idiot not to. I'm creating something out of nothing and then turning it into something else. That's as close to real magic as we can get. It's probably time I leave you alone. Hey, you're probably right. I saw a fire extinguisher in here earlier. If Tyler gets it, the fire might not burn long enough for me to reach Dickie. If I hid Tyler's keys, it'd take him longer to get the fire extinguisher from his trunk. I've got everything I need, but I won't be able to do it by myself. Hey, uh, Anna, can I have a quick sidebar? I found him. Where? The goon squad won't let me near it. Lynette isn't gonna be any better. They look after their own. I can get there, but I'll need your help. What exactly are you planning? I need to create a distraction to get to Dickie. Setting the bear statue outside Kayla's tent on fire would work, but it's critical I wait for Anna to act first, or I won't have enough time. Then I can use a match to ignite the splinters and get the fire started. I'll have to get out of there before Lynette and Kayla can close in on me. After that, I'll hide in the cabin. Tyler and JR will leave to put the fire out. 
it'll give me a window of opportunity to run to Dickie's trailer unnoticed. have to be cautious. I need you to sabotage the water hose. Unscrew the cap where it attaches so there's no pressure. Okay, but why? Do you trust me? Yes. Then trust me. been looking for you. We need to talk. Oh no, look. I'm real sorry I clocked you and shit. Clock me? You were the one that broke into Anna's house. You took something from Nick's computer. What was it? Where is it? I didn't know what was gonna happen, man. I swear. I'm a nobody, all right? I'm just a guy trying to get by, that's all. I just want to take care of my moms and live life, man. And I've been trying to find a way out all my life. I just agreed to talk to him but just like a quote or something. I didn't know who's. I don't have time. What did you steal? His notes about his article about the dealing and the, the drugs and names of dealers, and sellers, buyers, everything. I had to. Or I was gonna be next. You gotta believe me. What'd you do with them? Where are they? I don't have them, man. I left the stick at the dead drop up at Makeout Point. He'll pick it up soon, and then it's done. No proof, nothing. Who's coming for it? Tell me who's coming for it. My boss, Declan. His name is Declan. Declan? Yeah, the cop. You know him, everyone knows him. Oh man, I'm totally fucked now. When he hears I snitched again, I'm fucking done. But how was I supposed to know Nick was gonna stir shit up? Are you saying he's involved in Nick's death? Tell me. Come on, just let me go. Please, I already told you everything! No, just let me go, all right? I really gotta leave town before he finds me! I'm big! You're not going anywhere until you tell me what happened. So? Oh, hell, man! Declan made me set up a meet with Nick, all right? I, I thought they were just gonna talk his shit! Nick freaked out when he saw Declan. He, he tried to bail. But Declan caught up and hit him behind the head. Then Nick dropped, man. He dropped like that. Declan said he didn't mean to. He said it was an accident and shit. He killed Nick. I didn't know, man. You gotta believe me. 
I never wanted. Man, he didn't. He didn't say. Hey, ass wife. Should have known. Damn firebug. I'm gonna kick the shit out of you. Sam. Sam, we have to get out of here. Shut up. Your ass. Come on. You fucking coward. Someone give me my rifle. make any sense? None of it does. Why would Declan do that? He was always a stand-up cop. Now he's a crime boss? No time to think about it. Right now, we need to get to that dead drop. Nick probably gathered enough evidence to reveal what Declan was up to. Our word against his won't cut it. That stick is the only way we'll take him down. Or maybe you could just stay out of this? Declan's trying to save his skin. If you go against him on that promontory, you'll be trapped in a corner. This isn't a game. No one else is gonna die. You can't promise that. It's unfair to think you can. You don't know what's gonna happen. I don't either. But we're the only ones who could possibly bring some closure to these murders. Just control yourself, okay? The fire worked, but people could have gotten hurt. Sam, I know it's been a rough day, but you're freaking me out. Stop zoning out. We're just about there, and I need you to help me figure out our next steps. Next steps? At a place where someone might put a bullet through your head. No, that's... Stop it. I'm not doing anything. Other than trying to save your life. You're not thinking clearly. What are you looking at? You're focused on finding the facts and not focused on the very real dangers. You need to focus on the road, not on whatever daydream you're lost in. Just... just stop. You're the one that needs to stop. Sam, you're going too fast. You need to stop. Leave me Sam, alone. stop it. Sam, Sam, Sam stop! Sam, there's a turret. Stop! Stop! Sam, stop! Stop! Stop the car! Sam, are you okay? You nearly got us killed. I need... I need a moment. Take your moment, but make it quick. We're already at the promontory. We need to find that dead drop before Declan gets here. We need to talk. Yes, Sam, it's time. Ah, uh, what's happening? Sam, I can't. Where are you going? Get back here! I'm trying, but it's not working. Ah! No! No! Losing control of my own mind. Where are you? Can you hear me? Can you even hear me? Oh, fine. I'll come to you. What? I got a feeling I'm not gonna like this. Do not freak out. You've been through this before. There's got to be a logic to this place. I just need to figure out what it is. Stick to the fundamentals. Breathe. Focus. You can make it out. It still keeps going. It feels like I'm trapped in a maze. The question is, where does it lead? I wish there'd been another way. Remember the facts, Sam. That's how you'll get through this. I'm losing control of my own mind again. I'm almost making it a... She doesn't do anything, just sits around. Takes her back in pills and stares at the TV like a lot. Wonder what's in store for me now. When 
my father lost his legs. Nobody knew the mine wasn't following regulations. You were the only one who started asking questions. It can. But it does give me less patience for people who sling mud my way. You think you know who Nick was? Mr. Perfect? Give me a break. You have no idea. No one in this town does. I don't need that right now. Just give me a break. I give up. You know, Nick and I moved in together. Started to get serious. How little you know of the grief. Is that? Your mother told me what happened. I know she's always pushing you to make friends. Yeah. Well, she's just afraid you'll end up alone. She doesn't want you to be unhappy. Is she happy? Not always. But I'm not always happy either. Being happy isn't everything. I'd say it's more important to find out who you want to be than to be happy. Here, I brought you something. It's so clear. I can see it all at once. That's what gives it strength. It has nothing to hide. It can see itself for what it really is. And that lets it see everything. It's not a flaw. It's a gift. Like a, a superpower, you know? When the world is a storm, you stand calm at the center. Now, I need to have a real talk with myself. Where are you? Follow me! What? Which one are you? Sam! 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 Where are you? Sam! 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 Sam. Sam. Follow me! Everyone in town hates me. I think Anna hates me. I... I think I hate me. I have to get away from this place or I'm gonna die here. Inside at least. I get it. Just know I've always got your back. No matter where you go. I thought... that's what we were supposed to do. I'm sorry, I just... I just wanted to fix things. Sam, did you really think doing something neither of us wanted would fix anything? It's not you, Bug. It's this town. It's Anna. It hurts and I can't stay. None of that is my fault! I know, but I still have to go. It's not fair. I understand, but it's not fair. I guess you finally win for once. I know you don't want to talk about it, but he's your son. 
I know the real you is here. The rest are just illusions. I have to focus. They just want to put useless labels on him. step I've taken since. I'm ready. coming here. You know? You've opened yourself up a lot more than I expected. Especially to Joan and Anna. You're finally back on the right path. I believe some of the credit is mine. Why does it have to be so complicated out there? I'd say we've had a good thing going. It was tough, but you made compromises. You adapted to other people. Wasn't it nice to feel accepted? We've had our moments, but they never felt authentic. I understand why you'd feel that way. The two halves of your world, they just don't mix. There's Sam, the well-adjusted human, and there's Sam, the depressed, truth-obsessed misanthrope, who doesn't realize objective reality is a subjective myth. I'll tell you what the truth is. To be happy, sometimes you need to focus on people and not things. You make it sound so easy. I'm not sure I'm ready to let it go. It'll take a lot of work, but we can get you there. No one can enjoy life when they've got the weight of the world on their shoulders. What about the world? Everything has a price. Look, you've been helping me for a long time. Even today, without you, I would still be lost in my own head, in my own panic. Well, technically, that's kind of the case right now. Still, I'll take the compliment. 
but we both know I can't be split in two directions. I have to pick a track. Go along with me. Be a part of society. Be happy. Let things go. Accept the expectations of others. Stop pretending you're someone else. Or keep looking for a truth that may not exist and leave everyone else behind. But seeing the world for what it is, being able to make a difference, no matter the consequences. It's time. Two roads, and you can only take one. Sacrifice so much effort just to make myself miserable. I've had enough. You just have to care more about the people around you and less about everything else. I know. I'm ready. It's not going to be easy, but you and I, we're going to get there together. Anna probably went off after what Dickie left up here. You can't let her be out there alone. I know, but it needed to be taken care of. I concur. Hurry, Sam. No cell reception. If anything happens, we're on our own. Syringes, bottles. Basswood has been having a tough few years. Finally pull yourself out of your days long enough to join me. I was worried about you. I know. I had a bit of a panic attack. I'm really sorry I put us in danger. That's over now. I'm in the here and now, 100%. All right. Glad to have you. So I guess this could be all of this madness coming to a close, right? Hopefully in the good way. Maybe we can bring Nick and Dennis some justice. I'm ready to see it end. Anna, whatever happens, I'm really glad someone's here with me. Sam, we can get all sappy once this is all over. Now we need those files. I can't find them anywhere. Did Dickie say where the dead drop was? He didn't. We'll have to keep looking for it. Did you already go through that side? I've been looking everywhere. So far, all I've found is a lot of gum under tables. Declan could be here any minute. Let's hurry it up. Found it. You did? Let me see. With this, we'll be able to put Declan behind bars and clear your name. Come on. Hold it there, boss. Whoa. Declan. Now, you two just relax. We're here for the same reason. Now all you have to do is give me what you found in that there lockbox. You... How could you look everyone in the eye and lie to them? You went to his wake? You drank with his friends? Yeah. It was harder than you think. What happened to the cop defending this town? You don't know nothing about losing the reins. Simple things breaking so bad, they just get more out of control until... Try busting your ass for people that don't respect you for just a cop's salary. I spent years serving this town. I actually believed in what I was doing, too. And then you murdered Nick. Don't start thinking I enjoyed doing it. It just had to be done. It was just the same as with that drunk fool, Dennis. All I wanted was to see how much he knew and get him to keep his mouth shut. Turns out he knew more than he should have. It doesn't have to end the same way this time. There's always another option. Almost sounds like you wising up some, Higgs. Doesn't look like you're willing to take the same fall from two years ago. 
Fuck that common good shit, right? You were one of Basswood's best. People counted on you. Don't even try to give me that. I've given enough to those two-faced hypocrites. Everybody's happy to shake my hand and say how grateful they are. But as soon as you turn around, they'll stab you in the back. Eventually, I realize that's how people are. The only thing left is to adapt. Help keep a lid on things. And if someone's got a profit, might as well be me. Nick and Dennis, that part wasn't supposed to happen. But here we are. And I'm done leaving behind loose ends. Anna's gonna try something. Declan. Think about what you're doing. Is this what you want? You killed Nick. You killed Dennis. You're running the drug ring in Basswood. If only you could have left it at that. But you had to poke around again. Now I have two witnesses to deal with, thanks to you. This is bad. Be careful. Every word will count from now on. You have to lower his guard long enough for you and Anna to gain the upper hand. It's gonna be hard, but remember, I'm with you. Every word of the way. Tell me exactly why I shouldn't kill both of you right here. Keep your cool. He's not gonna shoot if he thinks he has better options. Otherwise, he already would have. Killing us is not in your best interest, Declan. The more bodies you leave behind, the harder it'll be to hide them. That's a good point. But at least bodies don't talk. Look, I don't want to do this. But I promise. It ain't personal. Don't delude yourself. Nothing is more personal than this. And you won't do it. What makes you think that? Seen into my soul? He wants things to stay as they were. To cover up the whole story. If he thinks you'll get in his way, he won't hesitate to pull that trigger. Three people gunned down the same day is bound to attract attention. You're a cop, Declan. You know the next strangers in town will be the feds. I could make you disappear. Ditch your corpses somewhere. No one would know. Come on, Declan. We talked to people. Followed leads. And if we just go missing, Walter, Bess, people who know us will ask questions. You seem to think you can just walk away. Go ahead. Tell me how that happens. For all his bad boy act, it's clear he wants insurances. To know he's safe. Deep down, he thinks everyone is as crooked as he is. Take the proof Dickie stole and let us go. We won't tell anyone. You know where our family and friends live, after all. And that would be enough to keep you from talking. Why should I trust you? You're you. You care about stories, not people. You published that article and sank the whole town leaving saps like me to clean it up. If I let you go, who's to say it won't be the same thing all over again? You know, as a criminal and as a cop, he's probably seen lots of desperate people doing desperate things. Stay calm, appear confident. You staring down the barrel of his gun is already having an effect on him. I put my own interests first, and it's in my best interest to not be shot. I could turn on you, risk my life and the lives of everybody I love, or I could go home and forget about what I know. Forget all about Basswood. Honestly, I could really use a reason to forget about this place for good. you become a wise man, Sam. I must say, Higgs, you might have found yourself a way out of this. How about you just hand over the evidence, Anna? Nice and easy. It all comes down to this, Sam. Anna's about to jump him. Keep his attention on you. It's better for everyone this way. You win, Declan. Good call. I expect you two to keep your end of the bargain. You asshole! has been shot. I need an ambulance. Just hurry! Okay, good. Stay with me. You have to stay with me. 
I'm fine. Don't worry. Anna, I'm... Anna, please. Harry James at 104.3 WVCK, the Basswood Sound. You heard the news today? A local cop who died in that fatal shooting last week is apparently the head of a small opioid ring right here in Basswood. Crazy. It's believed he used his position to bring in drugs from all over the county and that he murdered two people in an attempted cover-up. Good news, however. The journalist who was wounded while confronting the rogue cop was released from the hospital today. Oh, Sam. Nice to see you up and about. Him again? He really wants to be a part of this community, doesn't he? Wait, scratch that. He really wants to look like he's part of this community. Nice to see you, too. I didn't know you and Anna were close. No, we aren't. Not yet, at least. I just wanted to give her my best. What affects the community affects us all, Sam. Lots of well-wishers. Kathy, Walter, Bess. Makes me feel a touch like a ghoul. Well, sometimes it's what it takes to be part of the community. I know how it feels to be outside looking in. Very astute. Putting down roots is a rather active process. How's Kathy? Is she doing okay? She's been going through some hard times lately. I've noticed. I'm thinking of giving her some paid time off. That way she can focus on her daughter. That's very generous of you. Nah, I'm just trying to do my part. Besides, the pharmacy just wouldn't be what it is without Kathy. I feel so selfish keeping you away from everyone. I'm sure Anna is waiting for you. You have a good day. N no. You have a good life, young man. I'll try. Sam! Hold your horses. Anna's busy with the sheriff. You should probably give him a moment or two. Sure, Joe. How you been? How have I been? Son, I appreciate you being here for Anna, but you don't change what happened. My girl's hurt real bad. And things could have been even worse without you. You did good. See? Told you promising him you'd keep his daughter safe was a good idea. Who knows, it might have even given you the extra boost you needed against Declan. But you did do good. Well done, champ. Anna did good, too. I wouldn't be standing here if it weren't for her. <laughs> well, that makes two of us. You know, Anna told me how things went down up there. Said you getting inside Declan's head saved her skin. Declan wasn't a complicated man. Control, anger, greed. Knowing that. Being able to see a man for who he truly is, that's one hell of a gift. I know you're really here for my daughter. And today, you're not the only one. Lots of good people have come around to see how she's doing. Don't you be a stranger, Sam. <laughs> Not a lot of people with a good handshake left. Walter. Samuel, my boy. As I live and breathe. I kept meeting to call, but phones are so... impersonal. I'm just happy Anna's coming home. Things could have been much worse. It always can be. <laughs> it always can be. You went through something terrible, but I'm glad you came out the other end. I've had a brush myself with the Maker here and there, and I would never call them fun. Not fun at all. Life-affirming, though, definitely. Even for those close to you, it leaves a mark. Now, two members of my family of heart are gone. One is wounded. That day, you said you need to ride until you can't anymore. Well, this is as far as I go. The Basswood Jungle has printed its last pages. Consider taking some time to think it through. This doesn't sound like you. My first week in the bullpen, you said to me, the pen is not a sword, but a shield. You take this town's shield away? Using my own words against me. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Believe me, I wish there were another way. But I lost my flame, and there's no one to pick up the torch. Except... He's gonna offer you to be editor-in-chief. 
He never liked you leaving in the first place. Though, he is missing the obvious. Anna, she's connected to this place in a way that you aren't. She'd be the right choice. If you're not interested in the position yourself, that is. You. I see no one more up to the task. You've proven time and time again you're the quintessence of a journalist. <laughs> I should have told you a long time ago. Thank you, but no. This town and I have too much history. Quite right, quite right. It was a silly idea. What about Anna? I can't think of anyone who cares more about Basswood. Anna? She's always been a bit of a freelancer. I hadn't considered it. Though now I feel like a real Tom Fool. Do you think she'd take it? We won't know until you ask her. Wonderful. But Samuel, make sure this isn't goodbye. And next time I send you a text... I'll answer it, Walter. I promise. If I can give you a small piece of advice, a good life is one where you keep your friends close to your heart. Where are they? Where are Dad's notebooks? The yellow legal pad ones? You can get them later. You need to say hello to the guests who just arrived. The yellow ones were Dad's favorites. I wanted to start Joan? using them. Uh, they've got to be here somewhere. Just Joan give me Waldron. a minute. Don't make me say it again. Fine. I guess it doesn't really matter. Careful, Muley. She's in one of her moods. I'm sorry you had to see that. It was hard before, but now she's completely shut me out. She's still trying to make sense of all that's happened. She's been through a lot. Maybe Basswood just isn't the right place for her anymore. You don't understand. It's not that easy to leave. Kathy, I'm not here to judge. I just want to help. I know, I know. Sorry. I've just been dealing with so much lately. You've always managed to get Joan to talk to you. <sighs> Any advice? Now, Sam, we need to be really careful about this. Kathy's already on edge. Joan noticed her mom is overdoing the painkillers, but we can't just kick the door down and confront her directly. Kathy, Joan is distant because she feels you haven't been yourself lately. She told me at times it's like you don't see her. <sighs> it's nothing against her. I've just been... Working myself ragged, and I hurt my back, and... She said it wasn't just that. She's noticed the pills. It's the only way I can deal with my back, and it helps with... with other things. Look, I can't imagine how hard it is to raise a child by yourself, but I don't want to see Joan grow apart from the last parent she has. Oh, God. I... I... I didn't realize it got that bad. You're right. I need to get help. Sam, could I... Could I count on you to help look after Joan every now and then? She needs the people she loves close to her right now. I'd love to. I get along better with her than most adults. I just... I thought I could do this alone. I'm here to help in any way I can. Thank you. And if you ever need something... No, your family. I should really say hi to the other guests. Take care. And you make sure to push yourself. Get some fresh air. Don't let these doctors keep you cooped up for too long now. Oh, Sam, you're finally here. I was looking for you. Now I know you've been through hell and back. I know that. If there's anything the Basswood Police Department can do for you, or even just little old me, you give me a holler, all right? For now, well, I got some good news for you for once. We found Declan's fingerprints on Dennis's gun. And since your testimony and Anna's corroborate Dickie's statement, no charges are going to be filed against you or Anna. It's clear self-defense. Still hard to believe a man I trusted was running a drug ring. Here. She's worried about her re-election chances as sheriff. She's playing cleanup for the whole police force right now. Before you answer, just remember, it's always nice to have a police chief as a friend. It wasn't your fault. No one saw it coming. I still would have trusted him with my life. He was serious, 
dedicated. Looking back, maybe obsessed. It's a rot that grows deep under the floorboards. I didn't see it either. What happened isn't on you. Thanks, officer. Bess, hon. I've known you too long for you to call me anything else. Well, I'd love to stay, but I'm afraid duty calls. Look after yourself, Sam. Hey, Bug. Hey, Muley. This one is all you. I never could get a read on her. How are you holding up? Fine, I guess. Well, at least that's what most people want me to say when they ask. Come on, Bug. I want to know how you feel. How you really feel. I guess... better today than yesterday? Maybe? I still miss Dad. But I mean, not what happened to him... I don't know. Makes me feel a bit better. It'll keep feeling better with time. Even if it's hard, you have to keep one thing in mind. You're not alone. And your mom will always be there for you. No matter what. What about you? Are you staying this time? I'm not sure yet. Oh. But I promised your mom I'd help keep you out of her hair. You did? With you? I figured she needs all the help she can get. Hey, I'm not 11 anymore. So we'll get to hang out again? Like in maybe board games at the coffee shop? Just like old times? Anytime you want. You're the best, Muley. <laughs> I'm all right. Listen, I need to find Anna now. I'll see you around, okay? The sooner the better. So... So... I wasn't sure you'd show up at all. Yeah, I meant to get here before you, but... I had to stop by the cemetery on the way. Finally paid Nick a visit. Still doesn't feel like he's gone, right? I was still thinking he'd come greet me when I opened the door, you know? You feeling okay? Is it crazy to say it feels like the longest day of my life is finally over? Same here. It didn't feel like it would end. But at least I had you with me. <laughs> Lucky for you, or you would have been the one getting shot. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> what about you? How are you compacting everything? Oh, you know. Screaming inside my head so loudly I can't really think. Oh, me too. Or... Not thinking anything for a really long time? Yeah. Lots of that, too. Lots of looking at nothing really hard for a long time. At least it's over. Whatever was on Nick's laptop is gone forever. But so are the bad guys. The scales are balanced. I don't think Declan getting what he deserved will make up for Nick. And I can't shake off the feeling that maybe... Maybe? Want to tell me what you're doing here? Talk about the little details that don't add up and don't really matter. You better not be taking my happy ending away from us. It's just that... Okay. So, I talked to Walter. How would you like to be the next editor-in-chief of the Basswood Jungle? What? Are you kidding? I'm not. He's about to retire. I promised I'd talk you into it if you tried to turn it down. I don't even know if I'd want it. I'll go get Walter, tell him you're not interested. Don't you dare. I just... I need to think about it. No, no I don't. I do want the position. A lot. Okay, uh... If I'm doing this, I might need help. What about you? Are you leaving town again? I plan to stick around. At least for a little while. Maybe for a long while. That's good. I'm gonna need writers. I'll be here. Someone has to make sure this place doesn't burn down. Sam Higgs? Basswood Protector? Sounds a lot better than Destroyer.
I am gonna need business cards. Uh, no one uses business cards anymore. It's the 21st century, Higgs. What's old is new again. And think about what Walter would want. <laughs> well, business cards it is then.